Okay, so uh, welcome back. So I it didn't see on the keyboard. I realized I needed I needed to kind of fade this out even more. So I used the Death 3 brush to kind of fade that out even more. So I just kind of went around like so. So I'm, I'm still going to fade out some of these darker parts. I'm going to fade them out even more just to reveal the reflectivity under it. So I just keep going around this even more and just try to clear that clean more of it out just to make that shiny part in the front more obvious. So it's nothing too fancy, nothing too fancy, just repetitive process with a different with a different brush, with a different brush. Keeping in mind, keeping in mind our reference not to go overboard on this and then ruin what we already what we already have on this. Let me just clean this part even more. Okay. So like this. The previous brush, the previous brush we used the previous study on the other lesson was that one. So now I'm using that two that three. This that three has more of a broken up particle effect on this. So if you go over a particular spot some more times, it can kind of cannot give you the same this smoothed out face, but the, the edges the edges around that part will be kind of broken into various pieces. And that is precisely what I want for this. Because I don't want but I don't want this to be to feel or look too smooth. If you kind of have like speckled or broken off particles at the at the edge at the edge of this. Something like so. Yeah, something like this should work just fine. So it's in the end of the keyboard. I'll just go to the preview mode and kind of preview this just to be sure how this is working, turning out on my model. Maybe I'll maybe bring that back in. Because that's where I went to, I went overboard on that part. So I can just bring that back in by hitting the X on the keyboard to go to, to kind of invert the marks on the brush and then paint to review that back. Okay, I think this should be fine. I think now we can actually work on the parts. So let me turn on the parts. It's on solo mode. So, I'm going to be working on the bat. So, I'm going to delete this layer that is in there. I'm going to create a new layer. Create a new layer. On this layer, I'm going to be importing the our normal um, displacement mapping here. So, I'll turn off color, turn off, metal, turn off metal and heights. Then, for the normal, I'm going to plug in. So, I'll just type in bat. So, this is the map in here. So, normal map. You can see how it accentuated the details we have in there. Then for the height map also, I'll turn that on. For the height, height channel, then I'll drop in my displacement map in there. So this is, this is also working correctly. But it feels too intense though. It feels too intense. We can always, we can always go in there and then take this down. We kind of change this up a bit more so it doesn't feel that intense. So let me just see. Uh, maybe we can even leave. Let me turn, let me turn on just the height. You can see how the height intensity is more aggressive compared to the normal map. So let me just rename this. Let me delete this and use all caps. So normal slash slash height. Okay. So uh, for this, let's use. I think I'm going to use a smart material for this. So just type in wood in the search. I'll type in wood in the search bar. Okay, this is kind of not responding. Let's give this a moment. Okay, yeah. So this is everything about the wood now we have in here. So for the texture set settings, I'll put this size as 4K. So you can kind of preview this as the, at the highest pos as the highest possible at the highest possible resolution. So now the next thing is gonna figure out which particular material works best for that's where that works best and as closest to the reference image we have up there. So this wood ship hall old no not that one wood walnut is not too good. Yeah, this is also a good material though because of its reflect reflectivity. But I still going in for something more dry. Let me see. Uh let's see. Okay, I might just have to try any of these two and then try to figure out which particular one I prefer, I prefer even more. So let me, let's drag this particular wood in here. 
this wood sheep wood sheep wood sheep hall nordic okay let's try that instead so this is the result is giving us not bad at all but you can obviously see now that the, our same line is not obvious to see our same line is not obvious to see it's kind of making 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 this um texture map not it's not seamless enough oh no worries we're still going to be fixing that so i'm just going to check this map here just to be sure if everything is working correctly and you can see how this blends properly with the with our normal and um, height map that we picked out of so after the out of the brush giving it an even more an even more and it, 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 giving it a more interesting result so let's see uh Mm, just thinking just thinking so once the claim should bring this in also once i figure out the right smart the right smart 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 material to use then i'll just keep working on that particular one but for now i'm just going to try and test these two out so kind of see how they work on my model okay this one, this one still looks cool though spotlight one also looks cool though uh okay let's see uh i'm not this, this looks good but i'm not too sure if i want to keep this maybe if we're going for something a bit more newer we can use this but i think we need something that has this kind of old look to it and the previous material the previous material had that feature yeah this material down here has that feature Okay. Um, okay, I think I, I'm guessing I might just have to work with this because I like how this is looking. So I'm going to unfold that smart material now. So I'm going to turn off everything, every single layer one by one. So you guys can actually see what is going on in here. Then we can now later manipulate them to get our desired results. Or this is this like a base for us to start with. It's just a base for us to start, a good base for us to start with. You can see the same line in there. Let's just kind of fix that. So let's kind of fix that. So I'll turn this off also. Okay. I'll turn that off. I'll turn this dead off also. Just dust to turn it off. Let me scroll down. Let's see wood fiber. Let me turn that off also. Okay, let me turn that on. So next is our piece. This is our base, so this is our base color. Okay, no, let me just turn this back on. Okay, let me turn it. Okay, let me turn this off and on. Okay, I think I'll need to. I'll need to turn off our uh, height information. Let's no, let's 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 view the normal map or height and height information for just this smart material we added in here. So this is actually the material that's causing that. That's causing that um um making our same lines more obvious. So I click on the max. I'll select the mass I'll turn put this on triplinear mapping. No, that's still not fixing that. That's the our same line is still very, very obvious in there. See very let me just kind of see what this nothing is still working. No, let me okay, let me undo that. Just undo that, undo that again. I think we're on the wrong parts of this material. You're supposed to click on let me yeah, clicking on the mass and select that here. Yeah, this is what we need. So on this few layer now, this few layer, I'm going to change this from UV mapping to let me see, okay, UV mapping to triplanar triplanar mapping. Yeah, I'm much better. You see how that kind of fixes the seam line we're having on this. So that will kind of ignore our seam and then just kind of randomly or broadly apply the material around the entire model, kind of ignoring the UVs. Almost, almost kind of, almost kind of ignoring the UV seam lines. So this is much better now. Let's see what else we can fix in here. Let me turn this back on. Okay, that looks cool. Okay, let me turn this back on. So in this particular part, you just be, it's just in this particular part, it's just be, it's just you trying to figure out. How to use all the materials you have in there. So you want to kind of analyze them first, then begin to manipulate them later. But I'm going to change the color of this. Ch 
change the color of this. So I'm going to do, I'm actually going to duplicate this. So I'll do a duplicate for that. So just play save. I'm doing a duplicate of this wood rough. So I'm going to change the color of this, the base color of this. I'm trying to use a color that is, I think I went overboard on this. I'm guessing I went overboard on this. Yes, I went overboard. This is just way too much. I'm trying to match the color we have on the reference image. Though it might not be one to one kind of matching of the reference, but something a bit darker than this and a bit more brownish in tone. So I'm just trying to figure out the color in here. And this is just this is way too much. This is way too much. Okay, let me see if I can. Let me just push this this way. Okay, and I'll wait for it to load. Mm. I'm just gonna push this upwards even more. The saturation, I'm just going to push the saturation. Just to make this feel more brownish. Uh, maybe I'll just change the hue and push the hue downwards towards the towards the darker brown region. Let's see what that gives us. Uh, this feels too dark. This is just too dark. No, 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 no. This is just too dark. It's just too dark. Uh, I'm not so sure. Let me kind of turn this on just to see what that gives me. I'm turning every every that's on top of this. Uh, the the contrast is just way too broad. The contrast in color is just way too obvious. I don't want the contrast in color just to be too much. I don't need to kind of redo all, redo all those layers again. Let me just kind of turn this down. So I'll take this towards the yellowish part a bit more. Let's see what we have. Nah, nah, this is just too bright. This is just too bright. This is just too bright. If this doesn't give me the color, actual color I want, I think I might just have to use the eyedropper, use the eyedropper to kind of pick the color from the image itself. Yeah, let me just use the eye color and just pick out the, look for a darker tone around the image. Somewhere around here should be fine. Somewhere around, somewhere around here. My piece is kind of slow, that's why it's taking so much time to load this up. Let me just give this a moment to load. Okay. I think something like this should be fine. Something like, something like this looks fine though. I think I'll just work with this. I'll just work with this. Let me turn that off. So let me turn it on again, go into that fill layer. And then use triplanar mapping in there also. Yeah, that even fixes the same line even more. But that part is kind of fully in the using UV projection for that. So using triplanar mapping kind of helps that eliminate that same line we had in there. Then I can let's see what I can do in here. Maybe the rough, maybe I'll take down the roughness. I want this to feel more reflective. I want it to be I want it to feel more reflective, just like the reference image on the side. Maybe not completely one to one, but a bit more reflective. So the reflection is really up to, is up to, is applying on the model, but you know we have other layers of um, depth and those that that's more that's a more of a value to it. So that, that's kind of making the the reflectivity at the on the under part on the lowest level on the lowest layer a bit hidden. But you can actually see it at the top though. You can see it at the top or, or it at the top here. So let me. I'm guessing I might just have to. I'm guessing I might just have to create a new layer. It's just the roughness channel turned on. Just guessing. Maybe I'll just do that instead. But we'll see. We'll see. Uh, let's see. Okay. Mm, this is just me trying to figure out what to do next. But the idea, the idea is to 
the idea is to kind of make your roughness a bit better, a bit more, a bit more uniform, but not completely uniform though. Let me just turn, let me just turn all of this, turn if I can turn all of this off, and try to figure this out before moving on. Because I'm sure you, in this particular part, you have so many things going on on the on the on the layers. It gets a bit confused in time, so you always want to kind of simplify things by turning turning everything off and then start from the base and then work your way up. So to say if it doesn't feel too confusing for you. So I'm going to do exactly that now. I'm going to work my way up by turning off every other layer that is on top and just increasing this, turning it on layer by layer and then making corrections to, to it like a, that, 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 seems, that seems fit for this model. So I'm going to create a, I'm creating a new field layer now just to use just the reference channel only. Let me turn back the roughness channel. So on this layer, I'm going to make this a bit more a bit more reflective. So I'm pushing this towards the dark value just to make this a bit more reflective. This is fine. So let me just name that so I can just keep track of everything that's going on here. I keep my scene tidy so I can always keep track of what is going on. Now I'll drag. I think I'll drag. Probably I might even need to drag this on top of everything and even give that a and even use on a map to kind of drive this drive this reflectivity. Let's see, this is all the way reflective. It's completely reflective now. Let me drag this up. Probably somewhere around the year. Okay, maybe up a bit more. Mm, up a bit more. Let's see. Okay, let me drop this here, just below the roughness. Just below the rough the roughness thing. Let's see what we have, okay? We're beginning to get something now. Okay. So now would let me kind of use I think okay, let me just drag this all the way to the top for now. So I'll put this all the way to the top and I'm going to use a particular map map to kind of drive the roughness for this. Let me put this all the way to the top. So it's nice, it's more reflective now. So let me just push this like so somewhere around here. Then I'm going to use a map to kind of drive this. So let me just type in probably a BW map should be fine. So BW. So any of this map should be fine. Let me just try this one. Or maybe this instead. Okay, let me try this instead. So you can see automatically now. The, okay, you can see on your keyboard, you can kind of scroll to go to the roughness channel, kind of see how the roughness is affecting the entire model. Now this is roughness for the entire for it for every single layer on this on this particular texture set. So let me just increase the balance a bit more, just brighten this up. Mm. We we'll, we'll also need to let me change the scale. Now I need something more broad, I need a broader scale for this. So maybe somewhere, let me just somewhere around here. Now I'll change this to try blender mapping. So you cannot so you cannot ignore the UV seam line we have in there. Okay. So this is actually coming out very well now. This actually looks close enough to what I need it for, but not completely there though. Not completely there. So let me think I will tune down the roughness now. Oh, I think I actually made a mistake. I'm not supposed to put the max the map here. I'm supposed to actually create a black max for this layer. So let me create a black max for this layer. Then on the black max, let me come to this first. Then on the black max, I will create a few layer. So I had if I had a few, I had a few. Then in there, I cannot plug in the. Let me look for the material. Let me try this. Okay. Then I can actually do the manipulation in here. I can actually tweak this now in here. Okay. So, uh, okay. Let me think. I need to put this. Let me roughen this out a bit more. It shouldn't be that reflective. So I'm just roughing it out a bit more. Okay. Let's see. Now, there's still some things we can also do in here, though. 
So let's kind of start working in depth on this. For this pattern, I want to change this. this there are too many knots on this. The knots are just too much. This pattern, I'm going to change this. So we have knots. All these knots, knots are just way too much. If it's unrealistic because if it's unrealistic because it's like it's like a smaller part of it. It's just like it's just a part. It's not a full plank. So let me just take down those knots. So I'll take down those knots. Take this down. Okay. Okay. I think there are fewer now. I think I can actually work with this now. We have fewer notes in there now. Okay. So let's start changing this up a bit more. Start adding some scratches and some some really good refinement on top of this. So I will let's see. Let me turn this on now. Let's turn on the normal and height. No, I can't really see what's going on there now. So let me turn on the normal also, normal channel. So both of these now have been applied, I believe. Okay, it's still just the still just the eye channel that has been applied. That's fine though. So let's see. I think I like the, the color for this wood fiber, so I'm going to duplicate this layer. Let's let this layer and then control D. Let me see what this does. This dust. Okay, that dust is actually cool. I'll leave that also. I'll leave that. Maybe I can even drag it on top the roughness because this is the dust material. So dust is supposed to be more and more supposed to be more rough, it's not reflective. So I'm going to put that on top of the roughness layer. So that 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 will actually make more make makes more sense realistically. Okay, so I would create a new layer. Did I I think I'm going to use this color now, so I'm going to pick, I'm going to pick the color, pick this color for this. Like the, I like the color tone for that. And in here, I want the black marks. Then I'm going to plug in a smart marks in there. Plug in a smart marks in there. So the smart marks will be using our big out map for the big out maps for the cover trend to to kind of create more a more appealing result for us. Let me delete this. I don't need to delete this anymore. Just to keep things tidy. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, I kind of like how this is turning out. That's fine. Mm, the knots feel like it's more still more to do. Still have some knots all over the place. But no worries, just supposed to be having the, the nails and the those poker rings covering most of them, so I think that's fine. We can see how good this looks now. The details on this nice it's really some 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 knots, which is exactly what we want. Let me go into into that folder. Then on this layer, let me just name this to stain. Okay, scratches, scratches and stain. But that's could that's pretty much the smart max material. Smart max we're going to be using in there. So go to the smart smart max tab, and I'm going to type in stain and scratches CTS. So I'm just gonna drag this and plug into that newly created fill layer. Then I'll just give this a moment to load. Yeah, this is really interesting. Now we have something very, very interesting in here now. See, this, it actually, this actually breaks up the surface even more. Using the, using our grid, using our, it's in C on the keyboard. Using, using the, uh, using the, the coverture, the normal map, we kind of beat from ZBrush and using that to kind of generate it, our coverture and cavity map. So we have something interesting here because this smart map that uses your cavity and coverture map kind of generates generates a max inside inside the crevices of your detailed um, model. Okay, so this is actually cool though. You see how it's kind of adding scratches on top of this based based on the way we, way we created our alpha instead of the brush. But this feels this feels a bit more intense though. So this is a max. This is a roughness rather. This is a roughness channel. Though. So I still want to. Because this is also reflect. This is also affecting the reflectivity. Because this is this particular layer has very roughness also in there. 
So hit C on the keyboard. Hit C again. Yes, this is the actual max now for this particular selected few layers. So that's why I'm turning it off now. Affects it entirely. This is what we have. But what is going to manipulate this? We don't want this to be too intense all over the place. You might need to kind of take this down because this, though this is this looks cool, but we need to take this down even more. So we don't have this, have this all over the place. So that's what we can do. But it gives you the idea of how the aging of this material, of this wood material, has gotten based on scratches and being tossed, tossed, and probably even left on the left under the sun on the kids a few times. So I would click, or maybe I'll use this. So I'm, I created a new full layer. I'm going to change the blending mode to multiply. Just to break up that surface a bit more. So it doesn't say it's not affecting so it's not affecting the, or, or, or the entire thing. Yes, it's something like this now. So now we can actually blend between those two materials. See this on. You can see the eyes against more of detail. Just to bring back the undertone of the wood. Which is exactly what, what we want. And we can always manipulate that layer also if we want to. Maybe I can, maybe I can manipulate this layer a bit just to see what that gives me. Let's see. Uh, you always have control by every single setting in here. It's kind of manipulate and change that top and then until you, until you have your desired results. But so far, so which is coming out exactly how we want it. But I still want to kind of adjust this. Let's see what this does actually. I'm basically trying to play with the settings in here to see the result that gives me. And if I like it, then I can always keep it. If I don't, then I'll just take this, I'll just take this back, back to the way it was. Okay, let me just change this up. Let's see what this gives me. I'm actually trying to make the darker part more obvious. The darker part just means that any part that is dark won't be won't be revealing what you have on that layer, the color, the, the, the normal, the eyes, whatever it is in there. But the whiter part is what actually reveals what you have in there. That's the idea behind it. So let's see. I think this should be fine. We, think we cannot really live with this. So off, on. So this is cool. This is actually cool. Maybe I will bring this underneath the roughness. Okay, maybe maybe we can leave this here. Let's see what that gives us. Though the idea is that we're working non-destructively. If we feel we can we need to change this up later on, it's fine, it's completely fine. We can change that later on. Mm, let's see. But a general rule of thumb would be that the roughness comes under those scratches because any surface that's been scratched is rougher, rougher in nature, it's, not, it's no longer that reflective. So I'm going to take this back up. Let me kind of follow a, a realistic approach to this. Okay. So let's see, let me take the dust, even put the dust on top of these scratches. Yes, better, much better. So this does now be on top of the scratches itself because it's like a dust material. This will be like the topmost layer over over everything. So it should be on top. Following reward approach for this. Let me kind of add this dirt now. So let's see. I'll duplicate this layer. I'll put a new full layer. Then I will. Let me just use a more dark brown, darkish brown tone for this. Not that deep brown tone should go just fine. Maybe a bit darker, even darker than this. Maybe a bit even darker than this. Something dark. Let's go dark. Let's go to the dark side. Let me the dark side. Okay, so let me just name these dark stains. Okay, so the roughness should be a bit rough. Yes, it shouldn't be that reflective. It should be more rough because it's like that. So it shouldn't be, should be that rough. So for the let me the height. Yes, I want to give this a little, tiny bit, a tiny bit of height. So add the black marks in there. Now add the few layer. Then let's see what we can plug in there. Uh, 
me if I can find something interesting from this procedural from this procedural library. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna figure out, figure out something in here. Yeah, okay, there's so many, there are, there are a lot of powerful and textures from the Sotans Painter Library. I might not even need to look for any other external map to even work with. Most of what you, most of what you need, you will, you will find them inside of Sotans Painter. Which, which is why, which is, which actually makes this software really, 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 really cool. Mm, I don't find anything I want yet, so I'll just keep searching. And so I figure out what works best for me. Okay, I think let's just continue. Let's just continue this in the, in the next parts. So I'll see you guys when we can kind of work on this even more in the next parts. So bye for now.